Exactly. Well, according to our next guest, the G20 meeting in Seoul was a debacle in many respects, but it had one big winner. It was China. Joining us this morning to discuss his recently published Bloomberg op-ed is Gordon Chang. He's the author of The Coming Collapse of China. Gordon, great to have you stop by. Thank you. Uh, before we get to your op-ed, though, what happened today with Bernanke on the one hand basically taking a pot shot at China for their currency and China coming back and raising their rates, essentially, effectively raising their rates? Well, you know, President Obama got ambushed at Seoul at the G20. So what Bernanke is doing is saying, OK, both of us can play this game. You can blame us, China. Well, we can blame you, China. And so essentially what we have got is this recrimination. It's going to continue. And, you know, we're going into a political season a couple of years from now. Right. The Chinese have a transition. This is going to get worse. But you're saying, though, and you mentioned this in your op-ed, that uh, no matter how much external pressure there is, there is not going to be a move on the U.N. until, let's say, 2012, when the political leadership changes, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, Hu Jintao, the current supremo in China, is really risk-adverse when it comes to the economy, and we've seen this for the last seven years. And now we're going into an important political transition where the fourth-generation leaders are giving way to the fifth in 2012. And it's not just 2012, because it usually takes a couple years for Chinese, the new Chinese leader to consolidate his position. So we're going to see a period over at least the next four years where there's not going to be much movement on anything, including the currency. So does that mean that Bernanke is playing a dangerous game? Well, yeah, he is playing a dangerous game, but so are the Chinese. You know, this is the ultimate game of chicken between the world's two largest economies. <laughs> right. and, and, and essentially, and we're we all stuck in the middle. Yeah, everyone is stuck in the middle. But, you know, this is just sort of inevitable because you have these big global imbalances. You have the Chinese um, fixing the value of their currency. And, you know, the United States retaliating with QE2 and perhaps QE3, QE4, QE5. Is that what the Chinese are worried about? They're, you know, they're worried about a couple things you know people always say that they're worried about the value of their dollars going down yes but what they're really worried about is the QE twos and threes blowing up the Chinese economy with the asset bubbles getting worse and certainly inflation you know we we hear all this about inflation it's a lot worse than they're letting on and they're really worried about what the investors are going to do by taking easy money in the US shipping it to their economy but China has so much more of a controlled economy than the United States. I mean, isn't there a way for China, though, to clamp down immediately if they do see too much money flowing into their borders? They do have control, but you've got to remember that this economy is in the process of three decades of reform, and the uh, leaders in Beijing uh, don't have the same control over their economy that they once did. You know, Chinese investors, uh, participants in the market, state enterprises do all sorts of things that Beijing doesn't want. You got all these hot money flows into China and also out. You know, they've got these currency borders, but sometimes they just don't work. And, and that's what I think they're really worried about in Beijing right now. Oh, and in Beijing, I mean, do the leaders themselves, I mean, do you believe that eventually they want a stronger yuan, that they want a free-floating yuan? Well, I, I think that they probably want their currency to be the world's reserve currency, which means that they've got to take off their capital controls, they've got to let it float. But their game plan is well down the road. You know, we're talking perhaps decades. Um, and right now, they're very concerned about the way the global economy is going. So they're not going to give up any method of control, and they're not going to let their currency float substantially. Yeah, they might let a little bit of change, but not much. And isn't it, as you mentioned in your, in your op-ed, isn't it also that the time won't come until China really becomes a consumption-driven economy, right? Right. I mean, you know, analysts love to say that China's moving in that direction, but you've got to look at the government stimulus program, which is creating infrastructure and additional industrial production. That is, by definition, anti-consumption. And also, you know, holding down but the value... of actually the, going down, you're saying, in China. The, uh, the role well, yes, the percentage okay. of consumption in the Chinese economy is going down, not up. Okay, uh, which is contrary to what a lot of people think about China, that in fact domestic consumption is, is rising there. Um, Gordon, thank you so much. Really appreciate you stopping by. Gordon Chang, uh, the author of The Coming Collapse of China.